Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to be talking about many-to-many -many relationships. And if you already know what a many-to-many -many relationship is and you understand the concept, then you can go ahead and skip this video. However, I didn't want anyone to be left behind and that's why I'm making this video. Okay, so let's imagine that we've got multiple users. So the first one has an ID of one, and let's just keep things simple, an ID of two and an ID of three. And now let's create a bunch of roles. So the first one is as a designer, the next one could be developer, and then maybe we've also got somebody dedicated to database management. Management, So he could be like a DB manager, something like that. Cool. All right, so we need a way to say that a user has many roles because this user here might be a designer and a developer. And the opposite needs to be true as well. We want to be able to say, okay, let's get all of the users that are developers. So maybe for example, user with an ID of one and user with an ID of three are both developers. And we wanna be able to say, I want you to just give me all of the developers. So how do we create the relationship between the user and the role? We do that by creating a little table that I prepared earlier called the role underscore user table. And the way that we name this table is in alphabetical order, okay? So R for role comes before U for user. And that's how we come up with role user. So for example, if it were animal owner, it would go animal first because A is the first letter of the alphabet and then owner, okay? So that's the role user table. And it's got a user ID and a role ID. And it sort of works as a pivot table that connects these two together. All right, so let's imagine that we've got the user with an ID of one. By setting that to one, we've now created a relationship between this user and that table. And if we set the role ID to one as well, then we've created a relationship between the pivot table and the designer. And that's how it works. And the cool thing about this is, what if we also wanna relate this user to the developer role? Well, we can copy this down and the user ID is already set to one. So let's put that there. And the role ID would then be set to two. And by doing that, we've created a relationship between the user and the developer role. Oh, sorry, let me just set these IDs. There we go. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's have a look at a couple more scenarios. What if we want to relate this user to the developer role as well? We create another one of these pivot tables and the user ID will be set to two. So now these two are related and this role ID is set to two. So now the user with an ID of two is related to the role with an ID of two. And we can go as crazy as we want to here. So let me just delete these two. And we could say, for example, this user here belongs to all of the roles. So maybe he's like a super user. So we can give this an ID of three, copy this down. So we got three relationships where the user ID is set to three, meaning that these are all related. And now this guy's got the role with an ID of one. He's got the role with an ID of two. And he's got the role with an ID of three. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. As you can see, there is a lot of flexibility and it also means we can do some stuff like this. Let's add another table here. Give this an ID of one. We can say, for example, and I'm gonna show you this in the next video, give me all of the users that have a role ID of one. In other words, give me all of the designers. And in that case, we would get the user with an ID of one, and we'd come through here and we'd get the user with an ID of three. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. And I could say, give me all of the developers, and then we get user with an ID of three. Give me all of the database managers, and we get the user with an ID of three. Okay, and so this is infinite. We can create as many of these relationships as we want now. A role has many users and a user has many roles. So there you go. 
I hope that makes sense. In the next video, we're actually going to explore using this relationship in VOOC's ORM. And this is probably the second most complicated relationship you'll come across in this series. So if you understand this, the rest is going to be a whole lot easier. So if you need to, watch this video again so it all makes sense. And I'll see you in the next video where we go through the many-to-many -many relationship.